class, Dr. Higgs here again, this time coming to give you a little video walkthrough of really where to find the information here on our D2L course. So here I'm sharing my screen, and this is the home page. But before we get to the home page, I want to make sure you know how to get to D2L first. So first clicking on this link here, this is our Lone Star website. It's lonestar.edu. And to get to D2L, simply click on class login and you'll be directed to log into D2L. And then once you're in D2L, click on our course link. For today's demonstration, I'm using one of my Intro to Anatomy uh, D2L courses. All right. Just in case you're wondering, what is the BIOL 2404? 5,003. That's just one of my classes. Your class might be this one, but it might be a different one. Okay. But all my classes look the same. So I'm going to use this as, as a demonstration. And when you click on our course link, you'll see there's going to be a lecture and lab section. If you click on the lab section, you'll get a an announcement telling you you are on the wrong site. I don't use the lab section site. All your coursework for lecture and lab will be in the lecture link. Okay. And so I've clicked on this class's lecture link. And the first thing you're going to see is the home page. And on the home page are three things. There are announcements to the left. There are updates in the top right. And there's a calendar. The announcements are what you should be looking at every day. This is where I talk to you guys. Okay, normally we would, in a face-to-face -face class, we would meet, and I'll just start talking at the beginning of the class. Well, this is me doing that. Anytime there are any changes from this uh, calendar, or if you're wondering what do we need to do for the week, I talk to you guys, and I post weekly announcements. This is me talking to you. So make sure you check those announcements out every day. Then over to the right-hand side, you have a section called Updates. This is where you'll see links for your exams and quizzes, okay? You'll take all your exams through D2L. And when the exam becomes available, you'll see a link to access the exam. It will be in this top right-hand corner. So today on day one, the first thing you have access to is your syllabus quiz. And you'll be directed to the syllabus quiz, but just in case you have to leave D2L and come back, Here's the link right here. You have one quizzes, not attended. You'll see. Sorry about that. You'll see that that's your syllabus quiz. Okay, so think exam links, update. And then this calendar here. This is a calendar D2 will populate. I do not use this calendar. This is really D2L telling you that I've made something available or unavailable. So right now you see certain things will become available to you at certain times on D2L. That's what this calendar is. Sometimes you'll hear me refer to your calendar. Or you might hear me say, check the calendar for the date of your first lecture exam. This is not the calendar I'm talking about. It's the calendar in your syllabus, uh, in your syllabus. Okay. So just FYI, this is just the calendar D2L checks. If you want to look at it, you can, but I don't necessarily post anything directly to this calendar. And then on your announcements page, the first thing you're going to see today is your welcome announcement with some instructions on what to do on these first couple of days. Mainly, go take your student orientation. So that's the home page. The bulk of your material is going to be in the content tab. Okay. This is where you're going to find both lecture and lab material, plus any extra information I think might be helpful. The content area is where you're going to spend the most of your time when you're here on D2L in our online class. And so when you come here, very first day, first thing I expect you to do is your orientation, your student orientation. You find that off here to the left in your table of contents. And so when you click on it, you see this page here. It's your student orientation. It's just a series of web pages that I created giving you information, a lot of that first class information. Right. And just simply click on each subject. 
So I recommend you start in order and go on down. Okay, and when you click on each of these links, it brings you to a web page where I give you information. And I'm just clicking on the first one to show you how to advance. Okay, you don't have to click on each one of those links you just saw. Here we go. So I clicked on the very first link, and it's here describing our class. What does uh, Biology 2404 encompass? What do we talk about? And then to go on to the next section, just click on the arrows over here to the right. This arrow off to the right side, where my mouse is, that tells you to go on to the next section. The, mouse, the arrow to the left tells you to go back to the previous section. So instead of going all the way back to that table of contents I showed you, just click the next arrow, and it will take you to the very next link in that list we saw. And this is how your lecturing labs are going to be as well. You'll just click next to advance to the next section or I present information to you. And also on each of these pages, you'll notice this little bar here with a little list and a play sign. This is a screen reader. It literally reads everything on the screen for you. So you might be saying, oh, man, I've got to read all this stuff. Well, technically, no. Just click play, and it'll begin to read the screen for you. Okay, just a little FYI, sometimes it doesn't capture everything. For example, certain pictures might not be read out loud because it's a picture. So make sure you're following along even if you're using the screen reader for you. And you'll go through your entire student orientation. Just clicking next, hitting play if you want to, or just reading through it. And I give you lots of good information in your student orientation. I just clicked on the student orientation link to go back to that first screen I showed you. And I'll give my computer a little time. You see it's a little slow today. But here's that first screen we saw before. So when you click in those arrows, it's just advancing through all these sections. And you can see I give you good information like what is the textbook material, okay? Uh, how do we communicate? How do you get graded? Also, through, throw in the syllabus and calendar in this student orientation. So make sure you go through this. You will not be able to access Chapter 1 for lecture or lab until you do the student orientation. All right. And then towards the end of your student orientation, we have some next steps telling you what to do next. So that's what that link is. So you look at our table of contents here to the left, you see a syllabus and calendar section. You click on that, it takes you to the syllabus and calendar. And this is the calendar I'm referring to. Whenever you hear me say check the calendar for updates or check the calendar for dates of exams, this is the calendar that I'm referring to. And again, give my computer a little bit of time to load. All right, and here we go. Here's our calendar. Kind of breaks it down week by week, telling you what we will cover for that week. And you can see when exams are. So according to your calendar, your first exam is your lab exam on February 11th. I put the dates in there. First lecture exam, February 15th. Second lecture exam, March 8th. Uh, second lab, March 12th. So I put the dates in there. It is in your calendar all the way to your final exam, which is on May 11th. Okay. So that's the calendar. You find it under the syllabus calendar section of your content area. Again, this is just me navigating around, clicking on things, kind of showing you what's going on. A part of your syllabus, or sorry, not your syllabus, but part of your student orientation is talking about your required textbook information. And for us, we also use a Pearson product called Mastering a and P. I'm going to let you know this semester, I'm going to leave it up to you as to whether or not you want the textbook. But you absolutely need mastering A and P access from Pearson. Pearson. And again, I put this information in your student orientation, and we see it here. I say you can buy mastering A and P access directly from Pearson. Why? Because if you go to the bookstore, they might try to sell you the mastering access code with the textbook. Here it is. 
comes with the textbook. But that could be a little bit pricey, and I'm letting you know now it's up to you, even though I said it's required. It's up to you if you want to get the textbook. But you absolutely need mastery. And I gave a little document here walking you through the process of registering. Let's say you bought it with your textbook and you're okay with that. You, in, in the package, you have an access code. This document, Student Getting Started Handout for Mastering AP on B2L, that will tell you how to use that access code. If you want to buy Mastering directly from Pearson, because it's a little cheaper if you buy it only by itself, uh, cheaper, you can do that. This same document will tell you how to do that. Okay. You have to register for Mastering A&P through D2L. Don't go to Pearson.com. Follow that document's instructions in your student orientation. So once you follow those directions, you'll understand the next link that I'm going to show you. I'm just navigating back to the table of content. I just clicked on table of content. Again, giving my computer a little time to load. All right, and here we are. And one of the links here is Mastering A&P. Okay. Part of your registration is you clicking on Mastering A&P, clicking on Pearson, and getting registered. But this is where you're going to find a lot of your uh, homework assignments are through Pearson, Pearson's Mastering A&P. Keep going. Another link is for your lecture. All your lecture material is in the Lecture Modules tab. And I break it up by unit. You have four lecture exams. And each unit represents all the material for each of your exams. So unit one module material for your first lecture exam. Unit two is for your second lecture exam, et cetera. And then within each unit, you have your chapters. If you notice, chapter one and two are missing for me. I'm hiding those from all students until you finish your student orientation. So chapter one and two are on exam one, but you will not see them until you do your student orientation. Okay. And then the other chapters will become available as the semester progresses. And I do the same thing pretty much for your lab modules. I break it up by units and go section by section. And then you also have exam reviews. Again, I try to prepare you as you go along. And again, they will open as you get closer to those exams. We're going in order. And again, you notice things are missing. Lecture exam one review is missing. It will not show up until you do your student orientation. If you know, if I really want you to do that student orientation. And so you have lecture exam reviews and lab exam reviews. And then your faculty profile just reminds you, oh, this is a person behind your class here. Dr. Higgs, how do you contact me? Email. That's going to be the best way or the discussion board. But then I'll also be online Fridays from 10 to 11 here for a dedicated time. Because I could be in and out of class online, but when is a dedicated time? You could typically know I'll be online to answer questions if you're wanting a faster response. Fridays from 10 to 11. Online. So I'll just be on my emails waiting to see if anyone emails me or popping in to check the discussion board. That's really what's happening during those Fridays from 10 to 11. And then a couple more links. Another one here is useful tools. It's what it sounds like. I put in some useful stuff or things I think might be useful for you uh, throughout the semester in the useful tools section. Okay. Things like tutoring. We have tutoring here for free for students. And so if you ever struggle with retaining or understanding or learning information I present, and maybe I can't present it any differently, don't be afraid to talk to a tutor, okay? As well as some other things here, just helpful things. These aren't required. They're just useful tools. And then lastly, oh, yeah, I give extra credit. 
Okay. And you can find information about your extra credit here. It's really two forms of extra credit. One way of getting extra credit is by listening to a podcast and writing summaries on each episode. And podcast is called Small Talk Anatomy. It has to be this podcast. You can't go listen to your best friend's podcast. Listen to this podcast, write summaries on each episode, turn it in, and I'll give you extra credit, okay? It tells you right here, I give one point of extra credit for every episode you listen to and write a one-paragraph summary about. And just to be sure, a paragraph is three to five sentences. And then you'll upload your document. I'll show you where a little bit later. And there's no rush. Deadline is not until that almost the end of the class. Okay. <clears throat> That's one form of extra credit. And another form of extra credit is doing your course evaluation, usually around halfway through the semester, towards the end of the, sem of the semester. Lone Star sends out an email for you to evaluate the course, or I don't know if it's called evaluate the course or evaluate the instructor. They change the name. But if you complete the evaluation and take a screenshot of your submitted screen, I'll give you a point of extra credit. I want to see your submitted screen, not your answers. Okay, this is an anonymous survey you fill out, and we want to keep it anonymous. The only thing I want to see is survey submitted screen. Okay. And you'll get a point of extra credit for doing it. The maximum extra credit you can get in this class is 10 points. Doesn't matter how you get the extra credit, maximum is 10 points. Okay. I know it sounds like a little bit, but it actually has a big impact on, on your grade. So that's all the content area has. Then another place where you'll be spending a lot of time is the grade section. This is where you're going to find all your grades throughout the semester. And if you want to click on it now, it's not going to show anything because you haven't completed any assignments or exams. So right now it will be blank. But as the semester progresses, this is where you're going to be able to find all your grades, the grade section. And again, my computer's a little slow. But here it is. So right now, you see it lists out everything you'll have, four lecture exams, four lab exams. You'll have homework, a project, and a final. That is it. That is it. All right, and right now, it's all blank because we haven't started anything yet. That's the great section. Keep going. Then there's the course activity. When you click on this drop-down menu, so you'll see a couple options. Only major places you're going to go to are assignments and quizzes. These are the two major places you're going to go. Assignments are where I'm going to post really these major assignments, the project, the video project. Okay. So let me actually click on that right now. I'm clicking on assignments. And again, I'm going to have to spend a little time waiting on my computer to load. But you saw from the grade section, other than your homework, there's not really any extra assignments here. It's that video project, okay? And I'll talk more about this in the next coming week. So do not worry about video projects at all this week. I will talk about it more next week, okay? Use this week to get all caught up, get all your material gathered, and get started on Chapter 1 for Lecture and Lab. I will talk about video projects next week, okay? But just FYI, remember, this is just me showing you where things are. This is where you could also find where to turn in your summaries for the podcast I mentioned earlier and where to turn in the screenshots of your course evaluation. So that's it for the assignment post. All your other activities or your homework, for example. And you're going to be taking your homework through the math screen a and P link I showed earlier. And then the other place you're going to go under course activities is your quizzes. Okay. Right now, you have a syllabus quiz to complete after you've gone through your student orientation. So go through the student orientation first, then take your syllabus quiz. It's not for grade. I'm just doing it to make sure you've gone through the material. 
to me. So don't worry. Don't panic about this quiz. It's not for a grade, all right? But you need to complete this quiz before you can access Chapter 1 for Lecture and Lab. And as you, we progress through the semester, this is where you're going to find your exam link for Lecture and Lab and the final exam as well. And that's pretty much it for course activities, assignments, quizzes. Then think of collaboration areas where you could communicate. If you want to talk to other classmates, you can chat. You can click the chat link and communicate with other classmates. If you want to see who else is in your class, you can click that class list. But the major place you want to pay attention to are three things, discussions, emails, and WebEx. Discussions is the discussion board. This is where you could post questions or comments and everybody in the class can see it and reply back. Okay, you gotta imagine, this is a classroom and normally we wouldn't be able to talk out loud and everyone could hear and possibly respond to what they hear. But we need to still be able to do that. That's what the discussion board's for. So right now, just to get you used to using the discussion board, our little student uh, introduction activity. Just really post a little bit about yourself. That way other people can see who else is in the class in case you might notice you and someone else have something in common. Maybe you want to communicate inside or, or outside of our class. Remember, you do not have to communicate with anybody outside of our class. Mm -hmm. And then as the semester progresses, I will open up discussion boards for each lecture and lab chapter. Let's say you have a question, maybe you went through a chapter and you need a little bit more clarification, you could post. Hey, can, does anyone have a link for a video explaining osmosis that they liked? Or does anyone know when our first lecture exam is? You could post it here and anyone in the class can respond back. You do not have to wait for me to post. If you see someone ask a question you know the answer to, post back. And they'll, they'll thank you because maybe I'm in another class and I won't be able to respond right away. So think of the discussion areas that's all talking to each other. And that's what I hope. Please use the discussion board. A lot of times as an instructor for an online course, I get a lot of the same questions. I get a lot of when is our first exam, Dr. Hayes. I get that question a lot. Post the discussion board. Look at the discussion board. If you ever have a question, first say, hey, did someone already post that question in the discussion board? Then go check. Please, it's going to save me a lot of emails if you guys talk to each other and use the discussion board. But if you have a personal question or concern, email me. But if it's just a general question about a topic related to our class, post it here. People will appreciate questions. Mm -hmm. So that's the discussion area. And the last thing here is WebEx. This is a, a video conferencing app, kind of like uh, uh, Zoom or, or other conferencing apps. This is what we use here at Lone Star. So if I ever have a web conference where I might invite students, I'll send you a link, and it'll be a link to WebEx. You could click this. This is WebEx. It's our virtual. Think of it almost as a virtual classroom. But there are no times where I expect to, to meet with you. But this is all online. You're com completing modules already made. Okay. And then this last link is support. If you have any student concerns, you could click this link. It's like a major hub to connect you with different parts of the school. So let's say maybe you're not quite sure what classes to take next semester and you need to talk to an advisor. Look at that. They have advising services. Oh, maybe you need some help at the library. Boom, it's there. If you need technical support, this is why I love that support link. I am not an IT guy, okay? If for any reason a link doesn't work, a video is not playing, you can't access something, odds are I'm not going to be able to help. I'm the, I don't know computers. Click on technical support. They can help. The most I can do is tell you to turn off your computer and turn it back on again. Oh, that's not going to help. Okay. They're your best bet. Two types of support. Click on technical support if you have any problems with D2L. 
If you have any problems with mastering, you're going to have to contact the Pearson customer support. Please remember that. Technical support for D2L, Pearson customer service for mastering a p problems. Dr. Higgs to help explain material. Okay, not IT. Okay. Right. And and that, that's not just these links here. Off to the left hand side, they help you with a lot of things. Don't know how to use discussion boards? They walk you through it. Okay. Don't know how to chat with another student or join a group? This tells you. Don't know how to do anything on D2L? This will show you. Okay. So that's pretty much it on this walkthrough. Remember, don't be afraid about anything in this class. You could do it. I'm not just talking. It's true. Okay. Contact support whenever you need support, technical or mastering. Contact me if you need to understand something. Don't be afraid to get a tutor. There's lots of help. Don't be afraid to ask. Okay. But have fun. Take your time. You could do this. All right. Bye.